But this video is all about whether to stack your darts or not. Uh, a lot of people do stack their darts, uh, a lot of people don't stack their darts, and I thought it'd be a good one to do whether to stack your darts or not. I mean, me personally, I don't usually stack my darts. When I first started off, I naturally just threw a little bit over the top, so darts come down at an angle and come in. But a lot of players, best player ever potentially is Phil Taylor, stacks him like this and one on top of the other. Um, you know, so when they're sitting in the board, they're nice and flat coming at an angle. Some great players out there right now that are coming in the board and they all lie flat, flat on an angle, so you can actually almost hit on top of them and bounce into the treble. Me personally, I don't usually, but I thought I'd see how long it would take me to hit a 180 from just scratch, just straight frying. I mean, I'll show you how my darts usually flow. This is like this. That's an example of what my general grouping looks like quite high up. So what I'm gonna try is try and get them stacking. And what I'm gonna try and do is hit a 180 with them sitting down like this. So usually they're kind of this angle, so they come underneath, which sometimes you've got to be a little bit more, um, you've got to be able to power through with the follow through to sort of come up. But with stacking, you kind of can release a little bit later and they come down on top. But I'm gonna give it a go, see how long it takes me um, and see if I can even do it. I might not be able to do it to be fair. Um, but yeah, we'll see how long it takes me. And if so, I'll, I'll sort of explain how it feels and uh, yeah, if we can do it. Let's have a go. That wasn't a good start, <laughs> but they did, they did stack, I suppose, you know, I just got to uh, keep going. When I'm doing gripping, usually I'm gripping from back here, so I push in and they go up, whereas now I'm trying to grip from here like this, the front end, so I'm going to come down, so that's the difference. Sixty. I think one eight is going to be hard to do. Oh dear! I've got one triple. <laughs> it's so hard to keep it straight because I'm having a grip at a different point. My release is totally different, so sending them off to the left. might take a while. So close. <laughs> oh, so close. That might be as close as what I'll get. Oh dear. That might be it. Oh, I'm, I'm flagging here. Absolutely flagging. Get the last dart. Oh dear me! I thought, that was, I thought I was in there. I was going to call it as I, as I started throwing. Should have been a one eight. Oh, I don't know what that second one was in on. Tell you what, I'm starting to 
think it'll be a four there. Didn't expect this at all. Oh, go on. He's only got it in. Can't believe it. How have I managed to hit a 180 with them? Phil Taylor, eat your heart out. There you have it. It has took me 40 minutes almost exactly to get that, or 39 minutes to get a 180 with stacking. But I will say, if I'm looking at that now, it's not that bad actually. It started to feel a bit awkward when I was throwing from the left. I usually throw a little bit from the right, but when I was throwing my normal throw, I'm so glad I've got that. I'm so relieved. I thought I was going to have a video where I just hit 100 and I couldn't get any better. And I started, I just had a little purple patch where I just started all getting around it, just a little follow through. It did feel a bit different. It felt, I must admit, it felt a lot easier. When I started getting in the zone, it felt easier than um, what it normally is for me, actually. So it might be saying I'll play a bit around with a little bit more. Um, I'll probably go back to my old way, but I'm really surprised I got that. 40 minutes of practicing, I've never really done a lot of you know, stacking or gripping right at the front, um, and it felt really different in my throw, but obviously it just goes to show that once you have that kind of muscle memory in your release, it's not that difficult to just sort of change it that little bit if you can focus on just that follow through and just the release. Um, yeah, I'm buzzing about that. I'm really, really surprised. I didn't think, when I started getting 140s, I thought, oh, I'm not gonna be able to do that. And yeah, just gone for a little little spell. I should have carried on going, see if I could hit the nine on camera, but I, I doubt it very much. Um, really, very, very interesting to me, the, the difference between throwing. The key for me was where I stand, usually I stand kind of just maybe to the right, just off center of my normal throw. I had to kind of start on the left-hand side because when I was throwing straight, I kept spinning off to the left and ended up over here, you know, loads of fives and low. Um, and then a little, just before I've hit that, I just moved over to the right and tried to just sort of straighten out the throw, if you like. And, and then I started coming in kind of straight at this angle, started just getting a little bit more feel because there was less spin involved. Um, yeah, that's the result. So it is possible to just randomly start um, to change your grip totally and, and uh, it starts stacking the darts. Um, I will say, once you get one, and then you get the second one, the third one is, is harder to miss than sort of go on top to a certain extent. When you feel like you're just sort of releasing, normally when I release, I have to kind of almost accelerate a little bit harder, whereas that, you kind of almost flick it. It's, it's, a, bit, it's a bit weird, it's quite hard to explain. I would definitely say, um, give it a try. You know, if you're on the fence and you're especially playing early, give it a try, and what, what I did, just so you know, my normal grip is, is like this. So I'll grip at the back and I'll push through and, and the dart will start to raise up a little bit and fall at the end. Whereas with this, I was I was literally like that. So I'm going up and then the dart sort of lands sitting flat on the board instead of doing this. So usually it will come under and go in like this. Whereas for that one, it's come over and bang on the top like that, which is Phil Taylor-esque. <laughs> Nowhere near as good as him, but um, it was a really good experience for me trying it and I'd say the advantages of stacking for me is it's a lot easier to to feel where you are on the treble and sort of kind of clatter into it the disadvantage is probably once you block it if you go wrong if you like go above you, you, you're almost asking for trouble if you go at it you know if you go above the treble and it sits down you, you're asking for trouble so there's a very fine line you get the first start in you're you're on to a winner if you don't you're in a bit of trouble really but then by the same token it's a little bit similar to when you you know if you go the other way and you go below the treble. So again, the learning curve is, if you go on a stack, make sure you're below the treble, if you're gonna miss, or in the middle. If you're coming in at a normal sort of upper, more upright angle, make sure you're above the treble, because otherwise you're gonna block the bed and you're gonna have to switch. So um, yeah, that's, uh, that's me trying my luck at stacking. <laughs>